Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about the power and the brilliance of decentralized processes um, at, as opposed to centralized uh, planners, centralized thinkers, things like this. And I'm going to, it occurs to me, and we talk about these sorts of things uh, quite a bit, but in the most recent Science Moment uh, episode, I talked about the importance of emotional expressions in regards to the things that we care about most in life, the things that bring us the most joys in life are things like color and the visual arts and music and uh, uh, the faces and gestures generally of other humans. All of these, um, all of these things, in fact, have emotions inside them, even though the um, the visual artists doing the art and the composers doing the music don't consciously realize it, but at their base, they're all tapping into human stimuli, human expressive stimuli, which is why we enjoy them so much. And so I also played that off in the context of covering over exactly the emotional expressions that make life worth living. But it occurred to me later that, you know, the, the three areas of art that I talked about, sort of color as used as a stimulus in culture and in the arts, and the visual arts uh, more generally, uh, uh, going way beyond color, but all kinds of stimuli that are used in the arts and their uh, sort of human expressive uh, underpinnings, as well as music, these brilliant things that we all enjoy, and this is just the sort of the big, some of the biggest cases that we find, find in culture that harness us or do things for our brains. There's many other kinds of things, movies and just tons of other things, but these, these things, um, get that way, get emotions inside them, despite the designers not knowing that colors are about emotional expressions on the body, that that's really what they're about. The visual artists who are doing abstract art and doing certain kinds of lines, of course, sometimes they're just doing lines that are reminiscent and, and trying to show bodies and trying to show expressive, purposely putting faces. But even those who are doing very abstract things and think that they're breaking away from that often aren't. They often have the feel that they do because it's tapping into the artist's, it, the artist is getting this reaction, oh, I like this, and they have this intuition that it's expressive, and they don't necessarily know why, but often at its heart, there's human stimuli inside them, and the same for composers who have no conscious appreciation that music sounds like a mover evocatively moving in your midst. These things are not consciously understood by the individuals. They're not consciously understood by any, uh, by even society at large. And they're certainly not understood by some centralized uh, organization that should be ever put in charge of creating artistic and enjoyable uh, things for, for human minds. But nevertheless, the network knows, knows in the sense that over time, these things get selected for. The complex decentralized processes that occur in society as the new kinds of stimuli say, Doug tries this and Susie tries that, and then you multiply that by millions over time. And over time, the use of colors in culture and on the kinds of things that we have works for us, does things for us. The, the way that visual arts are so evocative and great that we enjoy them and the way that music we'd willing to listen, we're willing to listen to it all day it's because it has end up to end up being engineered for our minds and in particular uh, actually having the structures of human stimuli within them they're actually built they're like soil and grain they're made with people right they're made with people by virtue of decentralized processes that come to learn even though no individual knows, learns how to tap into human minds and make our minds uh, 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 rattle inside in particular ways. These things can typically only be done by decentralized processes. And they only have been done by decentralized processes. Uh, these composers, these artists don't know about my 2006 discovery that color is about emotion. They don't, most of them haven't ever heard of my book, Harness, that music has culturally evolved and to, set, to sound like a human moving in your midst. And even if they had read those things, that's just the tip of the iceberg. To do it well, to actually create a song that does it well, it's not going to help that much to read the book. The, read, you know, the book is not a prescri you know, prescribing how to do it right. 
the, it's sort of in the other way of saying that, like, no, it has all the structure of humans, but this is, it's not a, a recipe book for how to do good music, right? Um, the things that we care about most are uh, not just in many cases have emotions that they're built out of, human expressiveness that they're built out of, but much more generally, the greatest gems that culture has ever given us are due to designerless design. No individual can explain why it works. No centralized group can explain why it works. Society at large can't explain why it works usually, but at some abstract level, it knows. And that was your science moment. As an aside today, I just wanted to mention, some people sometimes say, hey, Mark, um, you have all of these videos. You're very upfront and you know personal with, people know what you look like. So how come your avatar is always this sort of scratchy kind of face all the time, uh, rather than just a photo of yourself like a lot of people have? Now, uh, this is actually a piece of art by my wife. My wife is an artist and um, Here's a bunch of uh, images that she's done of me over the years, just sitting in coffee shops. She does these things often in between five and 20 minutes it takes, where she scratches them out. And sometimes some of these you can see have been touched up with more details later, but these are intrinsically very fast kinds of efforts on her part. And uh, that's just the origin of where this particular avatar, I went ahead and just stuck to one. I had switched for years, but I think it's good just to stick to one because people and I recognize you, if you're on Twitter and other places, I basically recognize you on the basis of your avatar. You keep changing it, then I lose track of who the heck you are. It's nice just to stick to one. So that's the story with my avatar. It comes from my wife. And if you haven't gotten yourself a copy of Dr. Tim Barber and my Expressly Human, go ahead and do so. It came out last month, not last year, like I said in the previous uh, science moment, I accidentally said. It came out last month. We need you to your support. Uh, to get independent scientists read when journalists will not cover us. And that was your science moment.